Hello! Welcome to some more Mario Golf. Uh, I'm back. Paper Mario's back. I've fixed things, I think. Um, my controller is now functional. Let me just have a look at my, uh, I wonder if I can see my trophies and stuff. Um, does it say what I've won already? Okay, I don't think I've done the Dunes tourney then. Let me see here. Okay, but we've done we've done all the doubles tourneys with with Neil, so I gotta do the Dunes solo. I guess I can just do this, and I don't have to walk over to it. Yeah, sure. I'm just here. Feels so impersonal now. Oh well, let's golf. Let's see if I remember how to use a controller now. Ha! Huh. It's fine. Look at that fade! Oof. It's so much easier to time my shots now. I think I still might be behind the cactus, but uh, whatever. How are folks doing tonight? I hope you have all had a pleasant weekend. I had to go to work on Sunday for like, a mandatory store training meeting, so that was riveting. Yeah, yeah. It was rough. That's what it was. The game is just sympathizing with me. I feel like this is too much juice, but that's okay. Um, what else have I been doing? Playing Spoon, mostly. Not not as much as you would think, though, just because I've been very tired. I've also been working on CrossCode, which still remains excellent. Although, when I was playing CrossCode on the weekend, I was in the middle of a, a boss fight, I guess, where you have to duel another character. And it's the best out of five, and I had won the first two, and then when I was in the middle of the third, Cosmo jumped up on the desk and started demanding pets, and then I lost. And I thought, well, I'll just, you know, I guess, try again. But the plot progresses regardless of whether or not you win or lose, and I realized I hadn't saved in like 20 minutes, so I was like, well, never mind, I guess. Thanks, Cosmo. He's very proud of himself. When your char uh, uh, your childhood Yorkie didn't bark all that much in her prime, she wasn't afraid to assert herself while being passive aggressive. Your family and you would constantly joke she was a cat trapped in a dog's body. I like Yorkshire Terriers; are cute. I've never like met one personally, but I've seen them. They do seem like they would be a very like a chatty breed. Should have backed one. I remember reading about... Oops, didn't want to do that. I don't remember what breed it was. I think it was... I think it was in the Shih Tzu. It was... Maybe... Was it the Shih Tzu? No, it was... I can't remember what it's called. It was a dog that originated in ancient China. And I remember reading that um, they were a breed favored by the Imperial family. Why can't I think of the name of this dog? Sharpei. I think it might have been a Sharpei. And I remember reading that, like, say, the Emperor would go around with one of these dogs in their sleeves. Because they were bred to be companion dogs, but they were also snitches in that if they found intruders, they would go tell the much bigger, more threatening dogs. Today was one of those sleep all morning for no reason days, and you woke up at 11 a.m. upset about all that, but you got your day back on track. I'm glad you did. I know that can be a tough thing to recover from, and having to sort of rationalize, well, I probably slept that much because my body needed it, but also I wanted to do stuff. When you sleep all morning, it's never for no reason. You know, you gotta own it. That's true. You bought Pitman Pikmin 3 last week and still haven't played it because one spoon and two Pikmin is very stressful. It is, isn't it? I was actually thinking earlier, it would be interesting to stream, like, a Pikmin game someday. But then you'd have to see me stress now. But then, then maybe if I had the chat, I would feel less pressured um, by the time limit. Even in Pikmin 2, where you're not on, like, a strict 30-day cycle. It's just you have to be mindful of, you know, don't have your Pikmin wandering about after dusk, but like, the half- the day will be half over and I'll think, oh my god, I don't have enough time. I gotta get them all back in the onion. Like, Mori, relax. It's okay. 
Your weekend went well, though some Hollow Knight bosses have been giving you the runaround, especially that Hell Spider Nos. Ooh, you've been playing Hollow Knight though. Most excellent. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try putting from here, but it's gonna have to be a middle putt to reach. What do you think of Hollow Knight so far? I love Hollow Knight. I'm sure that's no secret. I really like the feel of the combat in it. It's very satisfying. And one of those games I think that really nails the difficulty where if you die, you never feel like it's the game's fault. You know, like something didn't work right. You think, okay, I know what I did wrong. I know what to do differently next time. You learn the enemy's patterns. You feel yourself improving with each attempt. Like, um, I won't I won't share the boss because um, I don't want to be a hypocrite and ruin something, but one of the bonus bosses you can fight in Hollow Knight um, was a really difficult fight at first because they're so fast, but then once you get their pattern down, it's just this rapid fire bang bang dodging whack whack whack, and you finally beat them and it's exhilarating! I don't remember how many times it tries it took me to beat them on stream. Um, but felt really good to do it. Yeah, I need to get up this hill. Oh, I, I can't I can't get up that hill. Okay, middle pipe, I guess. I need a little more juice since it's uphill. Can't really see because the pin's in my way, but that's fine. Eh. There we go. You rode the bus downtown today and had a delicious meal for the first time in years, which you have. Also, hello, Belle! I'd say it's time to get peached once again, but I'm not playing as Peach currently. But I feel like I'm getting peached in spirit? Impeached, if you will? Maybe it's not a sharp pay then. I'm sorry, I like I'm reading the chat so slowly. Pikmin 1 is a very obvious time limit. Yeah, the other Pikmins aren't as obvious, aren't are sort of blatant about the time crunching. Because yeah, the first one has that just hard 30-day limit, and it's pretty strict if memory serves. Like, there's 30 parts um, to get for your ship, and I think only two of them are optional. I might be misremembering. At least one is optional. I think two are. Pikmin 1 stressed you out so much as a kid. You had to pump yourself up each day before you played. You also had to plan out each day beforehand. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I definitely get it. I just- I can't deal well with time crunching games. I already feel stressed out enough about the inevitable passage of time in real life. You know, I think that's why games with strict time limits like Pikmin 1 or Majora's Mask uh, stress me out more than they ought. There's five that are optional. I see I had it in my head there was only like two. I mean, 5 out of 30 when you're on a strict 30-day limit is... I mean, you probably won't get, you know, a good ending your first time through. But then that makes your second time all the more satisfying. Enjoying the environment and controls of Hollow Knight, but, uh, Deep Nest... Bug Hell... is what I called it when I streamed it. I'm glad that I don't personally have a fear of arachnids or centipedes or anything because I could see how deep nest would be very uncomfortable for some people and even if not like it's very claustrophobic and dark and there's always things skittering oh I thought it was gonna roll a little further whatever it's fine and this actually may not be enough whoops it's fine no, not not the mantis lords. Although the mantis lords are, I think, a good example of when I first played Hollow Knight, I found them really difficult. But then when I streamed Hollow Knight for my second playthrough, and I found they weren't a problem because I had gotten so much better and I remembered their patterns. Oh, you know what? It might have been a Shih Tzu, the dog I was trying to think of. Little, but thinks it is a big dog and has a lot of attitude. That was uh, very sloppy, and I am behind a cactus now. Oh, 
Oh, baby. Oh, okay. Well, I can, I can kind of make it work. Okay. This, this might be okay. Hopefully, my fade gets me around the cactus. I guess maybe the fade is a good thing sometimes. There we go. I uh, should have backspun again. You think I would learn by now with how far my shot rolls? This is a weird putt. This this divot in the center, this crater. Um, I'm gonna be real. I don't have high hopes for this putt, but I'll give it the old college try. Uh, oh, that was that was too much juice. Whoops! And the ball's gone. You find Majora's Mask can be kind of comforting. It helps that you can go back to the first day if something goes wrong. That's true. In you know, Pikmin, you're just locked into the schedule. Oh, but also true in Pikmin, if something goes wrong, you can just not save. That is an option, isn't it? On re-releases of Pikmin 1, allow you, go allow you to go back to previous days. So that's even better, so if you just later on find that you don't have enough time, you don't have to start the whole game again. That kind of stuff is appreciated. Like, the other day I was talking to a friend about Fire Emblem Three Houses and how it has the uh, Divine Pulse mechanic, which lets you rewind a certain number of times. I think it depends on, like, the difficulty you're on. I think I only ever used it once because I forgot it existed. Um, but my friend had mentioned it was uh, useful because, like, the, the last enemy they had to defeat on that particular stage got a lucky critical on one of their units and killed them. And in older Fire Emblems, if that happened, if an enemy got an inconvenient critical and killed one of your units, were like, well, just start the whole thing again, forehead, just do it. But maybe some, I mean, you could elect not to use the Divine Pulse if you feel that it's, you know, uh, more, better balanced without it. But Honestly, I've played enough Fire Emblem that having to restart a map because of, like, an unlucky critical, um, I'm just happy to avoid that. Oh, good. Imagine a Pikmin autosave. Ooh. Modern Fire Emblem games do have permadeath, although I think from Awakening onwards, I forget if Echo, Echoes has this, um, but you can play on... Casual mode? They might call it Phoenix mode or something in, like, Fates. I don't remember exactly, but... So you've got, um, two different ways you can modify the difficulty. So there's your usual, like, normal, hard, um... And, like, whatever the harder difficulties are called, like, insane or maddening. Um, but then there's also classic or casual, which you can switch between. And classic has the permadeath. Um, casual has it so that dead units, um, will come back at the end of the next ma match. Or at the end of the map, I should say. I think maybe Fates has what they call Phoenix Mode, where, like, um, a downed unit will just come back the next turn, but I might be misremembering. Okay, Casual was introduced in Awakening. That's what I thought. So, like, if you want to enjoy the story, or maybe you want to play, like, on one of the really hard difficulties, but... You don't want to deal with the pain of suddenly having to restart um, because of an unlucky critical or whatever, or a strategy going awry like 20 turns into uh, about, then you can do that. I usually play on classic myself because I love pain. Hey, coming back in the next turn does seem like a little much. I don't know if any game other than Fates has that. And anyway, Fates was bad. Like, mechanically it was fine, but all oh, that story. Awful. Ugh. I, I'm glad I enjoyed Three Hopes as much as I did. Or not Three Hopes, Three Houses. I haven't played Three Hopes. Um, because I just... Awakening was okay. I really liked Echoes, but it was a remake of the second Fire Emblem game and wasn't quite as anime as the more recent ones, and Fates is just a tire fire. I love how, like, every character has one personality trait, and all their support conversations are like that. Oh, Metal Yoshi Pro, Pro Gamer is back! Hello, Senpai! I'm so happy to see Golf Senpai. <laughs> 
I'm sorry I'm doing toadstool tour, or not toadstool tour, that I'm doing advanced tour instead of toadstool tour, but still a good goal. <laughs> Hello, pardon me ranting about Fire Emblem. Um, I was going to say something else about Fire Emblem now, and I've forgotten, because I'm distracted by golf senpai. <laughs> Paper Mori can't wave. I can just waggle my head. I don't think I've, since I re, uh, not reprogrammed exactly, but I had to reinstall things in this computer, I don't think I've installed my other expressions either, I just never bothered. Great, I have a raiding party show up just in time to see me get stuck behind a cactus. I'm so proud of myself. It's fine. Fire Emblem Heroes has been a place to give characters who got absolutely screwed in Fates another chance to be useful. Well, that's good. Now, when you say absolutely screwed in Fates, do you mean not just like, say, stat distribution wise and growth rates wise, but also um, in terms of poor characterization? I haven't played Heroes, so I don't know if there's much of a story bent to it. This, this is a very ugly green. Let me see. Yeah, what is the one Fire Emblem game you've played, Don? Uh, this is not a nice green. I feel like I struggle to read the greens in advanced tour compared to uh, the 3D outings. Mm. I'm just gonna gun it. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. Uh, uh. Stats and skills. Well, it's still something. Some of the characters in Fates, I feel like maybe if they got a little redesign and put them in a better game, like a better written game, because I've only played, um, is it, yeah, Birthright, where you, you side with Hoshido, but oh, that plot was atrocious. Oh, uh, Fire Emblem. It's just Fire Emblem 7, but it was released here as, as just Fire Emblem. I don't remember what the... Oh, good. Cacti again. I don't remember what the, uh, correct subtitle is. Okay. Okay, maybe I can just scoot around this cactus here. Not Fire Emblem 7, but Fire Emblem 8, uh, Sacred Stones, was the first Fire Emblem I played. It has a reputation for being easier than other Fire Emblem, so it was good, I think, as Baby's First. Um, but I do distinctly remember one of my characters eating a critical on a 1% chance on the final boss, and I had to restart. And that was a like a two-stage fight, so I had to redo a lot. I was not happy. Oh no, that's... I'm also not happy with that. Goodbye, golf ball. Blazing Sword is 7, okay. And then I think 6 is... I've heard multiple ways to translate 6, like Binding Blade or Sword of Seals. But that's the one with Roy. Who, um, if memory serves, actually isn't a very good unit. The Roy game. Our boy. I should have put Ellawood in uh, Melee, but maybe, uh, I don't remember when Fire Emblem 7 came out, so maybe Roy made more sense. Canis is a good boy. I love Canis. Canis is one of my favorite units in that Fire Emblem. Same with Nino. I'm really sad that he doesn't have, like, an ending with Nino where he adopts her. Like, in, if you've never played a Fire Emblem, when you build supports with characters, sometimes they'll have a paired ending. Um, which doesn't necessarily mean romantic, it just means that whatever they do post-game, they do it with whatever character they've had the highest support ranking with. So it can be romantic or platonic or flam familial or flamingo <laughs> or whatever. Um, but Canis is like Nino's uncle. And I was really hoping that he would have a paired ending with her where he adopted her, but he doesn't, 
And that made me very sad, because I like them both a lot. Huh? Roy technically debuted in Melee since Fire Emblem 6 wasn't out yet. I hit a cactus. If it's any consolation, Roy's representing the family. You know, they should have put Ninian in Smash. How, how would that work? I don't know. Put a dancer in Smash. Oh, Roy's game came out about nine months later. Okay, then definitely they wouldn't have put Ellawood in Melee. I don't know if they were even thinking about Fire Emblem 7 at that point. I haven't even looked at who's playing right now. Well, uh, Todakeke's not doing too bad for himself. Oh, Neil. Come on, Neil. I thought I'd trained you better than that. But our rivals, Buzz and Helen, are doing even worse, so that's fine. As long as you beat them. The trope is called Marth debuted in Smash Bros. because you Americans don't acknowledge Japanese releases or something. Uh, let's just use a power shot. It's part five. Please don't hit a cactus. Please don't hit a cactus. Okay. You remember before Melee released, you read a leaked list of the characters, and when you saw Roy, you assumed it was the Koopaling. Had you only known that in 13 years' time, your wish would have come true. Would that not be strange if they only put Roy in? I feel like I've seen in like an edit um, from like The Simpsons where who was on the treehouse? Like no Bart's allowed or something? And it's like no no Bart's plural. Except I don't think it was with Bart. But you know what I mean, right? Anyway, all the Kooplings get to join in. But Roy. And the sign is no Roy's allowed. But like he's in. No, no Roy's plural. So all the Koopaligs get in except Roy because, you know, there's there's a one steam limit. Was it no homers? That was it. I'm ashamed I could not remember. <laughs> it's no homers. We're allowed to have one. Please let me get this eagle putt. I really wish I could zoom in. This little line on this little hole, it's just, it's not enough. Uh. <sighs> I did it. I did it. The one Steve limit, exactly. Was that the Stonecutters episode? Golly, that's an early one, too. Miss Eagle Eye Mori. Well, if I really was Miss Eagle Eye Mori, I would not be burdened by a pair of glasses. <laughs> I would sing the Stonecutter song, but it's very difficult to think of another song while I am hearing the dulcet tones of Motoi Sakuraba. Now I gotta hit an albatross! Oh, it just means I see eagles. I saw eagles when I was in Alaska. Apparently they're like seagulls there. They're just everywhere. Eating trash. They're not very bright birds. Sakuraba did the soundtrack for the new Star Ocean. I was wondering, since he's done all the other ones. Heck yeah. Pretty intense even in the demo. How was the demo? I've never actually gotten to play a Star Ocean. I got a PS2 quite late in its life cycle because um, I wanted to play, you know, all the peculiar JRPGs. Oh, I do have enough for Neil. Uh, I want more power, so maybe I can get that Albatross. And do I need to fix my control right now? I think I'm okay for now. More power. All right, Neil. Mm. I'm gonna fix your control. There you go. Actually, I didn't want to put two in. That's right, I have two points for you. All right. Mixed feelings about the demo. How so? Was it a fairly meaty demo? 
I find that's how they get you, is when the demo for an RPG is substantial enough and lets you transfer in your save data that you're like, well, now I have to keep going. Uh, that's why, if you have a 3DS, you should download a demo of one of the Etrian Odyssey games, because they're quite meaty demos, and then you should get hooked on them. I beat the Dunes Tourney High Score. I did it. About two hours, you, you went pretty slowly. You can't transfer your save? Oh, that's peculiar, especially for an RPG. Did it start you at the beginning of the game, or did it just dump you in media res, as it were? Dreaming of cake. I would love some shortcake. Look at my trophies. Proof of my golfing skills. That's weird that they would have you start at the beginning, but then not let you keep your save data. Okay, so these are my doubles trophies. Okay. Have I beaten um, Azalea and... Who's Azalea's partner? I don't think I have. I think I beat Azalea in singles. So let's take Neil out of his enclosure for some enrichment. Another Mori stream, another subtle recommendation towards Etrian Odyssey. Excuse you. That was not subtle. I don't want to be subtle. Me climbing on the rooftop saying, play Etrian Odyssey. You know, I haven't gone in here. Let's go in here. Oh, there are, there are more golfs to hole. That was the third uh, club tournament. A few hints from the pros, and I guarantee you'll see improvement in your ball's flight path. Honest. This makes me feel like I'm going to have to pay. What is your outfit? The pros that teach here are really popular in the golf world. If you want advice, go stand at one of the open tee boxes. You need even more distance to be competitive in club tourneys. To hit longer, reduce your fade a bit and lower your trajectory. Trust me, if you want to be great, have the pros check your swing. Your distance is better, but you're still drawing the ball a bit. Your trajectory is high, too. High winds will give you problems. Not if you're PD Piranha. Sure. Diagnose my shot, doctor. Sorry, you were a pixel off the center line. You fail. You are a disgrace to the Marion Golf Club. Get out. That was an amazing amount of topspin. Wow. Look, you obviously have skill, but if you want an analysis, just hit some normal shots, okay? What? I can't give you any advice on spin shots. Wh then you're useless to me. <laughs> Golfing, Mama. No, no, no! Don't shake the caddy! Your trajectory is off, but Mama will fix it! That's advanced amateur distance. Your ball fades. Your trajectory is kind of low. Your impact zone is pretty big. Your control is quite good. Your spin power is really strong. You still need a bit more distance. Your shot has a few problems. Your lie affects your shot a bit. Your impact timing is pretty slow. Your ball barely turns. Your stopping spin is great! Alright, that was... informative. It seems your shot is experiencing flu-like symptoms. Have you had it vaccinated? Thanks, Clippy. Who? Co? Core? It's too dirty to read. Cuckoo course. Is it haunted? Hello? Is this that old guy's golf bag? Nobody's messed with it for a while. It's all covered in dust. This place is definitely haunted. Is there like a dying man in here? <laughs> My beloved course is overgrown. My will to live fades as each green chokes on weeds. I have one last wish. Please, try it out and post a par better. No, die. As I expected. Is there nobody out there that can play my poor course under par? <laughs> I'm 
age ago, this was a fabulously popular little golf course. Too bad it's overgrown with weeds now. As odd as it sounds, I believe that Grampy would heal if someone played a good round here. Uh, can I change my clubs? Yes, I can. Um, oh, I thought I had clubs that improve control, but maybe I don't. Do I have another ticket? I'll be back, old man. You bet that old man isn't even sick, he just wants attention. Oh, I know, right? Is this diagnose my shot or roast my shot? Yes. Arnold Palmer cooking mama challenge. Um, do I have a ticket? I guess I do. Sweet control. Super pow. Mmm. I thought I already had some control clubs. Maybe I don't. I mean, I'm just looking and I don't. I mean, this might be good for, um, the cuckoo course. I'll take those. Thank you, on-site blacksmith. Lee Carvalho's putting challenge. Sure, I'll take them. Still hot from the oven! I gotta play Okami. Apparently it's on sale for, like, ten bucks in the eShop? You just realize this is obviously the Golden Sun developer, what gave it away. Everything? <laughs> but yes, it is Camelot, and I'm pretty sure it's running in the same engine as Golden Sun. I mean, I don't know that for certain, but the fact the the sprites, the text, the animations, like even the, the sound font and the composer um, are all extremely reminiscent of Golden Sun. I gotta play Okami. Would it make a good stream game? I don't even know how long it is. There's a man who will literally die if he goes without mowing the lawn for three weeks in a row. We're not even mowing the lawn, we're just proving that he doesn't have to mow the lawn, but his course is still playable. Okami's a little beefy. Grammy, this young firebrand has agreed to play our course and reckons to post a par better. Is that so? Oh, thank you! Hurry up now! Give it a try! Oh, hydrate. I'm gonna do that. Let me do that. If I speed through the game, it takes about five or six hours. Well, I would want to explore. But it'd be fun to play Okami. I've always wanted to try it. <laughs> Pardon! Anyway, the grass is long and the fairways are hard to see, but at least it's a part five. It hasn't been manicured or groomed for an age, so it might be tough. Hang in there and par out. Par out, man. Goodbye, Neil. Oh, oh, this is trash. Look at all of this. Heath? Is that Heath there? This course is definitely haunted. Are we sure Grampy is human and not an avatar of the course? That would be very interesting. What the- why am I aiming here? Isn't- where's the- Where's the green? It's over here. Why does it want me to go there? I'm so- Yeah, that's- that's not helpful. But I guess I just- I really can't hit it far because I'm in the heath! Well, let me try and scoot it here and see if I can actually get on some fairway. Ooh. Oh, no. Our grass is high and our fairway's thin, but we're everywhere so you gotta give in. Oh, that's even worse. Well, it is par 5, as he said. Maybe I can just scoot over there. Mario characters are banned from this game? Oh no. Yeah, I don't- I need to restart. I'm not gonna be able to get there. What is this? I thought this was more junk that I couldn't land in this light spot. And I'm definitely gonna be stuck behind some trees, but maybe if I can roll past the heath into this spot right here, it might be okay? I just need to land on fairway and not the heath. 
because I lose so much power in the heath. Well, the rough, rough is better. Let's see if I can get up on this hill. These people are very high maintenance. I bet they live in a rich neighborhood and they complain. Like if one of their... Oh no! One of their neighbors has an overgrown lawn. Heck. Okay. Gotta do that again. Because if I OB it, I'm definitely not going to get there in enough, uh, enough time. And yeah, I haven't played Okami, so it would be a blind playthrough, in fact. Ooh, heavy rough. That's not great. I could just get over here. Tree. Tree. If I could just get over... Get over here. Don't hit the tree. Don't hit the tree. Don't hit the tree. Okay. Okay. This, boy, this music is really sad. Okay. I'm almost there. This... Freaking tree, get out of my face. And I'll have to land on the green and then sink it from there. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh, uh. How badly am I stuck? I'm not stuck that badly, okay. Maybe we can do this. Our characters are rich. I mean, they must be if we're we're in like a, a, a school specifically for golfers. Clearly, we're we're rich kids. Oh, okay, I did it. That's not bad. And some juice for Neil. There you go. Good job, buddy. Fix my control. All right. All right. A golfer with the skills to post par in this course has finally come forward. Oh, glory. I'm not destined to meet the same fate as my course. Such joy. I mean, if you shave, you should be fine. Yes, it's wonderful news, Grampy, but take it easy, okay? I'll take nothing easy. Watching that rising star play with such fire has got me all twitchified. I'm gonna be a streamer. Grampy, remember your bad back now, and your knees, and you're still banned from Fortnite. <laughs> Grammy, we must find a way to thank this masterful young golfer somehow. Why, yes, you're absolutely right. Wait, I've got it. Dang, I'm smart! Oh my, Grampy! You're going to give him that? Excuse me, him! Uh, I am not Neil, you're giving Neil nothing. Oh yeah, he was bedridden five minutes ago. I just can't thank you enough! Because of you, my will to live has come back in spades! I pay my debt, so I want to give a special present to you. Please, would you take it? Sure. I'm sure you'll come to treasure it. Now where is that dang thing? It's around here somewheres. Thar, she blows! This is called a custom ticket. If you give this little butte to the custom club maker, I'll make a special club of your choice just for you. Trust me, it's well worth it. I'm sure this ticket will be better off with an up-and-coming golfer like you than an old hack like me. Woohoo. Take a bit of time, but I'm going to restore this course to the prime condition of its glory days. Once it's done, I hope you can come on back to these parts. Am I free? Grampy and I will turn back time and make our course as popular as ever. Come back and see. Alright. Imagine if I leave and come back and it's already clean. You're not anime rich until you go to college to get your PhD in children's card games. These people play golf with the same energy people play Yu-Gi-Oh on the show. It's true. Oh wait, I don't want to go to the Lynx course. I need the Dunes course. Just kidding. 
She was all like, oh no, you can't possibly mean giving that very rare and irreplaceable heirloom and it's a gift certificate. Would it be even better if it was expired? It's like a coupon for 50 cents off a Wendy's Frosty and it expired in 1998. Uh, Azalea, gotta find Azalea. Oh, Daisy's cousin, where are you? I need to beat you and your doubles partner into the grounds. This game should have boss fights. I mean, they almost did in a super rush, kind of, but then they wimped out. So, you're the champion doubles team. And now, I guess, you think you'll beat us in match play? Oh, I get it. Now that you're the new champs, you'd think you could beat us in match play, too. Ah. Oh, Tiny, that's her partner. Didn't you notice these rippling pythons I got for arms? The Tiny and Azalea team sure ain't weak. The only reason you won the doubles cup is because we weren't prepared. It wasn't lack of skill. Azalea, let's show these two twerps just how strong we are. What are you, Team Rocket? Let's get the match play started. We're gonna play you so tough, you'll beg to return our title. You're gonna play so tough? What does that mean exactly? <laughs> An expired Arby's coupon. Gosh, I haven't had a Frosty in years. Apparently they're doing limited time caramel apple frosties. Which I'm morbidly curious, but also I don't like the caramel. I just want to try the apple. I think Mario Tennis, um... What's the one on the Switch? That one I believe had boss fights. That's true, Kirby's Dream Course does technically have a boss. A boss, but it does have one. Has anyone played the Mario Tennis on the Switch? I never got a chance to try it. I've heard it's quite difficult though, like the story mode is very hard. Oh, Mario Tennis Aces, that sounds right. I mean, if Nintendo games went on sale more often than never. I like Mario Tennis. I've enjoyed, um... Mario Tennis on the N64, and, uh, what's the one on the GameCube? I want to say Power Tour. That might not quite be it. But that was a good one, too. And, uh, same with the, um, I also don't remember the name of the Game Boy Advance Mario Tennis equivalent of this game, because Camelot also did the tennis games on the Game Boy Advance, and they still- a tennis game singular on the Game Boy Advance, and it's still very much Golden Sun. I've played that one through as well, and I enjoyed the story mode, although obviously golf is my big favorite. Ah, heck. Power Tennis is the GameCube one, thank you. I enjoy tennis, but it also makes my hands cramp up after a while. I think I just get too intense. An eShop sale going on right now. You got Pikmin 3 Deluxe for 40. It's not bad. But again, it's it's both money and time. My projects right now have been Spoon 3, although I did beat the single player. And um, CrossCode on the PC. Although it's also available on the Switch. CrossCode is good, would recommend. Um, I'm on the, the third major area in cross code, so I'm not, you know, like, super, super far, but enjoying it. If you want, um, an action RPG that also is kind of a bit like a twin-stick shooter, and, um, rewards technical precision, but also has accessibility features, if need be, um, then I'd say go for it. Good music, too. There's a lot of games that... Uh, I still gotta get around to playing. Like, 
Kirby in the Forgotten Land. I'd love to play that at some point before it gets spoiled for me. But Okami's pretty tempting. Because again, it's like, I've heard only 10 bucks. Well, that's American money, so maybe it'd be like 15 to 20 bucks for me on the eShop. But it's still pretty good. It's a shame that Forgotten Land has no online multiplayer, but I'm not surprised. I'm still holding out hope that maybe they'll add some sort of online multiplayer for Return to Dreamland Deluxe, but who knows? Mora, you've been putting awful tonight. Can you sync this for chat, please? Oh no, I definitely won't sync it now. <laughs> maybe it'll just roll. No, it won't. Sorry, Neil. Oh no, what have I done? I ruined it for us. Never mind, Azalea also ruined it for them, so. The sale's actually decent, I'm surprised. Is Mario and Rabbids on there for like super cheap with all the DLCs and whatnot? Because I picked up Mario and Rabbids for super cheap with all the DLC like a ways back. And I was surprised at how good that game was. You'd think with the concept it would be obnoxious, but it's actually quite charming. Um, the music was also instantly recognizable as Grant Kirkhope's work. He's just got a very distinctive, bouncy style. And rather than being obnoxious, it was charming. And it was nice to see Mario and Friends animated with more character than you tend to see in first-party games. Or not, well, not... You know what I mean, like, in-house developed um, Mario titles. You forgot about Forgotten Land, eh. And I'm sure you probably genuinely forgot about it. It's just funny with the name, you know. Oh, Neil. Well, it is a part five. Ah, uh, but see, look, Tiny's got enough drive to get on the green. <sighs> if you haven't been here for previous streams, I have zero control over Neil. So only one out of every four shots is under my command. That's rough, buddy. And I'm so close, too, I can, I can reach with the sand wedge. Uh... Neil is an agent of chaos. Like, if you're playing poorly, I find the AI does a decent job of making up for it, but of course the AI is also not great on their own. We've lost this hole. Thanks, Neil. Whoops. Oh, yeah, whoops is right. Maybe he didn't have enough drive to get on the green. I don't know. You never heard of the Rabbids before the Mario Rabbids game. I've actually played the uh, the first one. We had it on PC for some reason. The uh, Raymond Raving Rabbids. Um... Which is kind of a, a weird, it was like a bizarre minigame collection. And I can see why they eventually sort of branched the rabbits away from Rayman because they were sort of stealing the spotlight from him. Gosh dang it, Neil. Um, although apparently Rayman is going to make an appearance in the Sparks of Hope, the next Mario and Rabbids game. So that'll be interesting. I haven't gotten to play the Rayman Legends games, which is a shame, but I really enjoy Rayman too, and that is something I would like to stream in the future. Haha! We did it. I've never played the original Rayman. Although I've heard it's really hard. Like, really punishingly difficult. Neil, what the heck was that? And you need to get all the, um, what are they called? Electoons? All the caged critters. If you want to beat the game. I've heard Raymond Origins and Legends are really good. Like, just really slick, satisfying platforming. Which is what Donkey Kong Country 2 feels to me. Like, really just slick and satisfying to play. 
Uh, I feel like if I do a power shot, I'm going to bounce too far. And that wind, too. I don't have a very high shot, though. Uh, I'm going to try here. Mm, that was sloppy. I, I need to play both of the Donkey Kong Country Return games, and I'm sad that I haven't got to play either of them. Because I've also heard they're excellent. The second Rabbids game was a su surprisingly solid party game. Which one is the second one? So much of the games is just that charm of like how how much character the characters have in their animations. You max completed Donkey Kong Country Returns, but you wouldn't say you liked it. You just kind of forced yourself to do that 100%? How would one say the Donkey Kong Country Return games compares to the three Super Nintendo titles? Oh, it's just Raven Raving Rabbits 2 is the second one. I couldn't remember at one po what point they dropped Rayman from top billing. Much, much harder than the Super Nintendo games. Interesting. Because the Super Nintendo Donkey Kong Country games already have a reputation for being quite difficult. You saw streams of both Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze. You didn't particularly care about the first, but Tropical Freeze got you to buy a Wii U. Oh, that's pretty compelling. Returns games are very different from the Super Nintendo games. The SNES games have their own unique atmosphere that the Returns games lack, but Returns games are great in their own right. Do they feel just very satisfying to play? Because that's something I really enjoyed about Donkey Kong Country 2, is that it just feels good to play. Like, mechanically, it feels good. The levels are fun to run through, the music is great. Neil, what the heck are you doing? You can't even get me on the green, this boy. Ah, uh, there we go. You died a ton in returns, but you never felt it was controller smashingly hard or anything like that. That to me sounds like well-balanced difficulty, like Hollow Knight. As I said about Hollow Knight earlier, if you die, and you think, okay, I know what I did wrong, and I know how to fix it next time, you don't get the sense that some element of the gameplay itself has failed you. You know, like dying to, uh, uh, like a bad camera, for instance. Or controls not functioning properly. I am looking at you, Shadow the Hedgehog. The level design was extremely annoying. Lots of trial and error gameplay, pixel-perfect jump sequences that overstay their welcome, and maybe the worst vehicle levels of any platform game other than Battletoads. You know what was a bad vehicle level from uh, Donkey Kong Country 3 was the... What's it called? Rocket Barrel Race or Rocket Barrel Run? It's... Um, I think like the penultimate Lost World level, or it is the final Lost World level, not counting the boss fight. I can't remember, but that one sucks. Nice Tropical Freeze fro flows a lot better than the first Returns, because it doesn't have the mandatory motion controls like Returns has. Ugh. Yeah, I, no waggle would be great. I don't like having to use waggle because it tends to be imprecise compared to a button press. Rocket Rush, yeah. Ugh. I'm glad it's not just me. The level sucks. Donkey Kong Country 3 has some annoying gimmick levels, and that one is uh, at the bottom of the barrel, if I may say. Your Switch currently has Hades in it, and that's not, in com not coming out for a while yet. Completely fair. Hades is excellent. Yeah, insert Donkey Kong Country 3 gimmick level sucks. <laughs> I mean... 
I'm trying to think of like a good gimmick level in Donkey Kong Country 3 that I enjoyed. But I am I'm blanking. Like I can think of gimmick levels, but ones that made me go, oh yeah, that one was great. Maybe um I don't remember what it's called. It's the uh I think it might be like Riverside Race. Just cause I I kinda like the whole speedrun challenge of it. Okay, the low gravity one isn't bad. It's better than the one with the water that reverses your controls, but when you hop out of the water, your controls fix themselves. Which can make it weirdly obnoxious trying to get on dry land. Is Crackshot Croc, is that the one where you're just getting shot at for the whole level? But for the bonus stages, at least one of the bonus stages, you get to use the cannon? Oh, hey, did you bring light? I spotted your locker in Splatoon, by the way. Very nice. The first Donkey Kong Country Returns needs some sort of definitive edition. On one hand, you have the Wii version with mandatory motion controls. Then you have the 3DS version with no motion controls and more levels, but it's stuck on the 3DS 240p screen. That is rough. Oh, this is me. I don't know if I want to hit this tiny little island in the middle, but it is a par 5 hole. Oh, it's windy, though. It's very windy. This might end very poorly, but I'm gonna do it. Let's see. And we're good. We're good. Riverside Race you were afraid of as a child because, oh god, not the bees, not the bees! That was definitely a stressful element. The bees chasing you, and the music was pretty stressful, too. That's why Donkey Kong Land 3 is so great. It lacks all the gimmick levels, so it's just the simple gameplay, which is really fun. Oh! I didn't actually know that it lacks the gimmick levels. Just scrolling chat up real quick. When it comes to Hollow Knight, one of your main complaints is how none of the bosses you've encountered, with the exception of Nosk, are located anywhere near a bench. That's true, but I find the walk usually isn't too bad um, compared to maybe some other games in the genre. One thing that gets me from a game design perspective is I don't mind difficult boss fights and whatnot where you sort of have to learn the pattern and learn how to cope with their attacks. What I don't like is ones that involve either A, lengthy cutscenes, or B, long walks to the boss, or both. I seem to recall hearing that about... What game was it? I want to say it was Sekiro? Where there's a, a difficult boss in the game that you have to clear out like a bunch of dudes before you take on the boss, but if you die to the boss, and I mean, it's a souls like you're going to die to the boss repeatedly you have to take out all those dudes again and it just gets tedious at that point it's like why well, I, I dislike auto scrolling levels because if you die then you have to wait until you can get back to wherever it is you dunked up not putting save points near bosses is the kind of thing that shouldn't happen anymore it has two sled levels, which are brutal. Also, for 100%, you're required to speedrun some of the levels. That is cool. I like the uh, speedrun element. Like, um, New Super Mario Bros. U. I haven't played the, the Switch version. Maybe if it had online. But um, New Super Mario Bros. U had these challenge levels that you, were, you had to speedrun through. And they were really addicting. Like, you'd... You know, you'd restart a bunch to make sure you didn't hit any obstacles and you would find the optimal path through. And then you'd look at the target time for gold and be like, Oh, I can shave off even more seconds! And you would just keep doing it, trying to shave off a little bit more of your time every go-around. It was super addicting. See, I like speedrunning in theory. But the amount of patience and time investment that speedrunning requires means it's not a hobby I would want to take on myself. Okay. 
cave story was miserable with not putting save points near bosses. Three bosses back to back and then dodge some falling, falling boulders without taking damage. Pretty brutal. Oof. Tropical Freeze is very speedrun friendly. Each level is made for fast flowing movement. Oh, that's the stuff I like. That's the sauce. Good job, Neil. Terrible. Like, fast flowing movement is one of the reasons I like Donkey Kong Country 2 so much, and why I would often replay a lot of its levels back in the day, just because it felt good to try going through them real fast and all slick-like. Like the coaster levels, I enjoyed the coaster levels. Not a big fan of the minecart levels in Donkey Kong Country, but the coaster levels in Donkey Kong Country 2, great. Maybe because they have better collision. <laughs> and there's no heck you Kremlin at the very end. personally recommend playing Tropical Freeze over the first Donkey Kong Country Returns. The first one is good, but it feels like a trial run for Tropical Freeze. I was about to ask, but I can't play them out of order. What if I miss important lore? And eh, Mari, it's, it's Donkey Kong. What lore? Monkey eat banana. He rule take banana. Monkey punch. The end. The Scott Pilgrim game is on sale. I've heard that one's good. And it's got proper online multiplayer, yeah? I've never read the comics, nor have I seen the movie, although I've heard the movie's good. And, I mean, props for being set in Toronto. That jump where there's a minecart on the edge of the track that you always hit, yes. I know exactly what you're talking about, and it's why I hate the minecart stages in Donkey Kong Country. The minecart's the very edge of the track that you always hit, and the heck you Kremlin at the very end. Neil, what are you doing? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, the Scott Pilgrim game is, you can get, I assume, on like the Xbox and PlayStation stores as well, but it's back up for sale. Pretty sure. No K. Rule or Kremlings in the Returns games. Oh, it's just those... I don't remember what they're called. The, the Tiki Monsters. When it comes to Tropical Freeze, one thing you love about it is how Nintendo was incredibly proud about how difficult it was, as seen by one of the trailers. With the Funky Mode, now featuring Funky Mode. Which I know people like to make fun of, but... As I've said many times before, I appreciate games having accessibility features, because it means more people can play them. So it's easier to badger your friends and say, Oh, I love this game, you should play it! You appreciate that the eShop spares you from seeing how much the games you bought at full price are discounted. You want funky mode in Splatoon 3's anarchy modes. Can I just have Funky Kong materialize out of thin air and take the hit from me whenever, like, a min-maxed E-leader is pointing its barrel at the back of my skull? Oh, that's right, the first minecart level in Donkey Kong Country you can warp to the end. I almost forgot about that. Raymond Legends is 10 bucks on Switch. Funky just, like, bounces on everything, right? And I wish I could... I can't reach this, can I? No, and I don't... Neil wouldn't be able to chip it in, I don't think. I don't have that much faith in his abilities. Have you played much of the, uh, the Anarchy battles? I played some... <laughs> I played some uh, Tower Control the other day, the Open series, and did pretty well. Had a good team until inevitably a connection error, but had several matches with them. Although if you're playing Open, you get points so slowly. Like a knockout win, I get 8 points. And it's 200 something to the next level. Although if we lose, I only lose 2 points, so that's not bad. And presumably you get more points if you do a series. 
of battles, but at the time when I was thinking to myself, I'm gonna play Anarchy Battles, uh, the series was Clan Blitz and I didn't want to play clans. You played about 10. You have a 2 to 8 record. Hey! I mean, that ain't nothing. Especially because there's probably a lot of returning Splatoon players. People smurfing on the low the low ranks. I'd love to uh, do private battles for streams so we can all play the um, ranked modes without having to worry about them too much. Something that's a missed opportunity in the first Donkey Kong Country retu returns. The Super Kong that beats the level for you isn't Cranky Kong. It's not? That's disappointing. Is it just like a ghost or something? Woohoo, that's a lot of juice. You love how much content Splatoon 3 has out of the box compared to the first two games where it launched. That's a good point. I forgot how kind of bare bones they were originally. I'm gonna fix this fade a little bit because it's kind of bugging me. It's just a ghost. Maybe it's Wrinkly Kong! And I'm gonna... Um, me, what do I want to do? Do I want to give you more... No, let's give him more power. Did he just say, I'm cool? Oh boy. We even lost in match play. We didn't just lose our title. We lost our skills. Yeah, it's some sort of space jam situation. Where I just jammed a straw on the back of his head and drank up his, uh... What do they call it in space jam? Their talent? Yeah. Azalea. I'm in shock. I think... I don't feel like talking to anyone. I just want to go on home. Awkward. Oh dear. Tiny's really taking this loss hard. It's gonna take some time for him to get over it. I'm upset too, but I've known since the day I won the cup that I'd need to give it up one day. I'm okay. I guess now we'll just have to try again. The road to the top just got a little longer, I guess. You two do your best out there. Then Tiny and I can make it our goal to beat you someday. Oh, it looks like the Mighty Lynx doubles champs are here. I can't wait to watch you play. Sleep with one eye open. Hang on, let me... I'm just reading chat real quick. You were catching up with a friend who hadn't played Splatoon since 1. And he mentioned that Salmon Run was like, uh, some people say that the whole mode was just disabled routinely during certain hours. Yeah, that is unusual when you stop and think about it, huh? You know, I haven't done the go-go gates, which are down here. Tired of traditional golf? Try a new twist on an old game here! I'm just looking at chat regarding the anarchy battles. It's kind of insane, actually. You either get A, completely decimated, B, go back and forth and eventually win by the skin of your teeth, or C, start strong but then completely faceplant and get destroyed by the end. We've all been there, if it makes you feel better. Nothing like a come-from-behind victory in overtime, though. That feels great. Unless it happens to you, and then it sucks. If you want to play here, you have to follow the rules of the course, and they're different. What you must do is hit the ball through all the gates and get it into the cup. Can you do that? Can I? Go, go, Gates Forest. I feel like they had a rationale for why Salmon Run was um, uh, time-locked, but I don't recall what their rationale was exactly. If you're thinking you can get the ball through all the gates and still par out, Go for it. Wanna try? Okay, let's see what you got. Come with me. 
Bye, Neil. Turf War and Salmon Run for if you want to have fun. Anarchy Mode for when you want to get mad. Have you had a chance to try them all yet? Yeah, I realized I'm still using my control clubs and not my power clubs, so that's okay. The only thing you can think of is that it increases the amount that it's played if it's not available all the time. Like, scarcity driving up demand? Which honestly sounds like a thing Mr. Grizz would come up with. Oh, have you tried um, all four of the different ranked modes? So Splat Zones, Tower Control, Rainmaker, and Clan Blitz. I think Splat Zones or Tower Control are my favorite. Splat Zones, maybe? I definitely played the most Splat Zones. That's the one I'm an X rank at in Splat 2. Plus, Tower Control is uh, good for the Luna Blaster, which is my baby. I like using the Carbon for Tower Control in Splatoon 2 as well, but what's the Carbon special in 3? Is it the Zipcaster? I kind of miss the Ink Storm. That said, I've gotten some good mileage of the Zipcaster with the Luna Blaster in Tower Control. <laughs> you love the simmering annoyance in my voice whenever I dress address Neil. Look, he's trying. I respect that. But also, he's not trying hard enough. I wonder if I can, like, sneak it in here. Pro probably not be better just to go here. Or even down here. Just sort of thread it between the trees. Splat zone and tower control are your preferred modes. The clam one confuses you. Um, I do remember when Clam Blitz was first launched in Splatoon 2 and I was playing it with friends over voice. And we were all calling the power clams large boys. Like, I got a large boy. The other team has a large boy. I don't know why. I think that was Rue who started saying large boy, but it might, it might have been me. Neil will be awarded with a sugar cube for his efforts before I lock him in the dark basement. Hey, the, the, the lodge is sunny, it's fine. We did it. I'll take that. All for me. To excel at this game, you need a complex strategy and accurate shots. And you have both. Nice. If you think you can split all the gates and power out on the next course too, I'll let you try. Sure. Splat Zone's dope, but you got a soft spot for Tower because you crave lunacy. Yeah, Clan Blitz is an odd one. I feel like if you really want to excel, it requires a lot of coordination, which I should um, actually make sure that I'm getting the gate. Hang on. Uh, that's not what I want. Oh, I didn't mean to hit start over. Oops. I was like, wait a minute. There we go. Yeah, if you want to do well in clams, I feel like a certain degree of coordination is required, which you can't really do um, just playing with randos. Oh, you legit had never seen it. You joined an anarchy battle and was like, yo, look at these clams everywhere. And you're like, oh, I collect these, you guess? Wait, what is our barrier? Oh, no. Did, did you win? Did you win? Are you winning, son? Are you clamming, son? Not at all. <laughs> well, you tried, and that's what counts. Clam 
plans definitely take some getting used to. Again, it's a mode that I think would benefit from more, I uh, guess, just more options to coordinate beyond Booyah on this way. Even, even having, like, say, this way. Like, say, hey, I'm sneaking up on the enemy's barrier um, by doing a little trick where, okay, you get, you get nine clams, and before you pick up a tenth one, um, because if you pick up a tenth, it becomes the power clam, and you show up on the enemy's radar. At least you did in Splat 2. I don't know if this still happens in Splat 3. Probably. But, um, you throw a clam forward past that tenth clam, and, uh, you keep doing that, so you're throwing one clam forward, and you're only ever carrying nine. But you're sort of relaying ten until you're up close to their their basket. So that way you can kind of sneak up on there, and they might not notice you coming with the power clam. Only game mode you've won is tower control. Splat zones, you've come very close. I know you'll get there. I'm a very staunch believer in people and their abilities. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, thanks, Ness. Okay. Better than your first Rainmaker match in which you repeatedly got the Rainmaker only to run in the wrong direction. Oh no! I've definitely seen people do that. Like, get the Rainmaker, and then clearly they have no idea where to go with it. It's like, no, no, what do you- no, that way, please. You think you played fine if the overall points at the end are any indication you were best on your teams? Good. I have this problem where I feel like if I lose a ranked match, then it's all my fault somehow. Even if I look at, like, the statistics and, like, you know, I splatted the most and was splatted the least in return, and I think I did a fairly good job of managing the objective. I still feel like, oh, I didn't do good enough. It's on me. Um, boo -boo 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 -boo. More power. You always blame every loss in every mode on yourself. It's hard not to, I think. But hey, it beats being the kind of person that's always like, Ugh, my other team is so bad. I'm always carrying these chumps. There is nothing funnier than seeing all seven other people fighting over one route and taking a different one and single-handedly winning clan blitz. Yes. That's what part of the reasons why my play style is very much about outflanking. Why couldn't I start at this one, huh? It's gotta make me hit it over here. Um, but yeah, like, uh, people tend to get um, tunnel vision when it comes to the objective in ranked modes. So for stuff like even tower control, when I was playing with the Luna Blaster, um, I got a lot of mileage out of actually going behind the other team and getting them from the back because they're so focused on the tower and getting us um, directly head-on that they don't think about somebody coming from their flank until, surprise, they're all dead. And the Zipcaster does help with that. I just gotta make sure I don't get chumped while I'm using it. I also realized that if you're using the Zipcaster, I don't think your ink tank can refill. So I'd be trying to take people down with the Zipcaster um, while I'm using the Luna Blaster, and I wouldn't have enough ink to do so. Which is a little awkward. Still remember the Miiverse post from the first game that was like, When I die, I want my team to lower me into my grave so they can let me down one last time. Aww. That is pretty good. I'd say that's up there with Mom left us at Best Buy and... I wish squids were real. You just don't get stuff like classic Miiverse anymore. Man, it wasn't Splatoon, but I know there was a couple that were like, my parents are getting a divorce. Or another one that was like, 
Does anybody think Luigi is kind of hot with them replying to themselves saying, Ever say something you regret? What the heck is this? I'm, I'm stuck in this bunker. Ooh. That's, that's not good. Uh, yeah, um, I might have to restart. Ooh. Oops. Well, that's fine. This is easier than ring shot mode in Toadstool Tour, knock on wood. Which one is your favorite? So since I mentioned a few. Why can't Metroid crawl? <laughs> exactly. Uh, the ever say anything you regret. I don't remember exactly how he phrased it, but it was very funny. That guy who was obsessed with watering games. Jellyfish is helping, yes. Um, there was this Splatoon 2 player. I always called him Johnny Cash Money, but his name was like Dollar Sign Johnny Dollar Sign. And he would keep making these posts about being a stinky boy who loved what what sort of body wash and money? And it just it's like, you don't know if this is somebody's fetish or just, you know, they're just talking really openly about how much they love money and also body wash. Irish Spring, thank you. It, sound, it sounds fake. I don't even know if that's the word for it. It just sounds bizarre and unreal when I talk about it, but Johnny Cash Money. Um, I know Joe and Dak have seen him before. Where is he in Splat 3? I'm gonna hope he was a weird kid being a weird kid. You know what I kind of miss from like Splatoon 2's... Actually the first Splatoon even's Miiverse posts was the drawings that were clearly done by like small children. I just remember one, it was for a Splatfest I think? I believe the Splatfest was Would You Rather Build a Sandcastle or a Snowman? I think. It was like a little kid drawing of like a half-melted snowman and it was just saying, dang. And I don't know why that was so funny to me. But just this snowman going, dang. Like weird little kid art is the best. Ah, oh, jeez, I'm in a weird spot. Uh, no, I can salvage this. I can salvage this. We're okay. Can't salvage it great, but I can mostly salvage it. Can't believe we're writing a viral Irish Spring advertising. Oops. That's fine. I got an extra hit, so. You've been seeing a lot of Splatois lobby posts about not inking the home base. Apparently, that's an issue. That's always been an issue. There was one where a dude drew Hank Hill talking to Bobby, going, Now, Bobby, there ain't nothing cringe about ink in the home base. I've seen that one. It's very good. I've also seen, like, a weird amount, and by a weird amount, I just mean a non-zero amount of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Which, I, for, for the record, I think is very funny. The only kind of stuff that I don't want to see is, like, anything not safe for work or stuff that's, like, very fetishy, you know? Because a lot of squiddos play this game, and I'd like to keep it safe for work. Upcoming Splatfest, Walt vs. Jesse vs. Saul. Current trend in the plaza telling furries to stop being horny. I've heard, I've heard, I haven't seen any horny furry art. I've seen a lot of furry art, but yeah, you know, furry art's great, but don't, don't do the horny furry art. Because again, a lot of squiddos, little squiddos play this game. Thank you. 
Yes, yeah, Splat 2 also went through that phase. I am Team Gear for the Splatfest, because I'm a pragmatist. Oh, I'm putting! Oh boy, I thought I was doing an approach shot. Well, that works out! Well, yeah, you're Team Fun because you like that hypothetical, you know, what would you bring with you to a deserted island question. This is kind of an awkward layout with these fast fairways. I feel like I'm gonna roll too far. Ah, oh, you're on the good team, Kapodoka. Oops. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Heck. Mm. Oh, don't get the hiccups now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, the Tony the Tiger Twitter telling people to tone it down with the art. <laughs> oh, hang on, I'm gonna drink some water. <laughs> I think I still might have the hiccups. Oh, I still have the hiccups. Sorry in advance. Oh. That's embarrassing. Right at the start of the splat fashion, Shiver instantly downs Big Man with a flare cut. Big Man, no. Okay. Um, I wonder if I can curve it. Get it through here. That is some strong wind. I will try holding my breath. Please excuse the silence. I'm not being rude. I'm trying not to hiccup at all of you. Maybe, maybe... No, just kidding! Let me try again! <laughs> I thought I had them, and then I hiccuped again. Whatever. Uh, I can't figure these gates out. I really want... Heck, wish I could just see clearly from my perspective. But what the heck is this? Oh. I don't think this is completable. Oh! Oh, those are different gates. Oh. Let me try one more time. And if it bleh, doesn't work, I'm just gonna go and do the, uh, the Lynx Twenty. Gosh darn these hiccups. Ooh. Should we all hiccup as a sign of community? Don't put yourselves out. Can you deliver- can a person deliberately give themselves hiccups? Wouldn't that be an evil superpower if you could deliberately give people the hiccups? Like, say somebody you really hate is making an important speech or trying to impress their date or something, and you give them the hiccups. I tell the hiccups, either those curtains go or I go, and then hope they go away before I pass out. Let me try holding my breath again. Blah. Okay. 
Okay. You know, maybe that worked out. I was just interpreting these these gates from the wrong perspective. Oh, that's that's a little ugly. Uh, it's fine, probably. Well, your hiccups when you were younger were literally painful, so you'd never wish it on anyone. I hope you get the hiccups would be a good non-aggressive insult. I think it's a little aggressive. Calm, steady breaths. <sighs> but Adora, I don't know how to be calm. I'm not good at being calm. <laughs> I feel like the longer these go on, the funnier it gets. There we go. Peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth or something works. Usually I just hold my breath. And that works okay. okay. The worst is... I've definitely hicked up, hiccuped while yawning at work before. And if you've ever hiccuped while yawning, it comes out really loud. And I've startled people. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna try again to hold my breath and drink some water. Chotomate kudasai. Maybe I can save this. It is a par five. Ugh. Not great. But possibly workable. Ugh. There we go. Okay. Okay, now you just get on the green and through the gates. Should be okay. That wind is a little troublesome though. I think we should be okay. Shield it a little bit. Okay. okay, I think we should be alright. I hope. I think I got rid of the hiccups, maybe? I hope so. I can just not donk up his putt. I donked up the putt! That's it! I lose! Goodbye! Ah! Oh. Don't shake your head at me! The fact that you can't par out using gate rules means that you're weak at hitting out of trouble. I'll hit you out of trouble. Into trouble. Nah. Once you have the confidence to par this course using its special rules, come back and try again. Whatever. Next time. Hang on, I didn't talk to that lady. It's impossible to play a relaxed round on this course with these wacko rules. I need normal rules. Well, then why are you on the Go-Go Gates course? I don't know what to tell you. You're like the customer that once said... You always steam the milk too hot at this place. You need to steam your milk cooler. Would you like your drink at a cooler temperature? No, I don't want it steam cooler. What do you want? I can just you can dispel hiccups by shouting too, but only if you're in a quiet place. I'm not good at shouting. You probably already know this, but the Lynx is a seaside course. The landscape and terrain cause problems that most golfers aren't accustomed to dealing with. Everybody's really surprised that Kid reinstated himself here at the Lynx Club. It'll shake things up. And matches against top golfers, hitting tee shots to the best spots with great control is essential. You figure you can hit 8 out of 10 shots to the best position with the wind blowing this hard? Sure, why not? Maybe I should have equipped clubs that uh, 
let me or have, give me a lower shot. I don't even know if I can reach this. I don't. Yeah, I'm not thinking I can actually get to this with my current shot power. Huh. Well, especially with the wind. Just play anarchy modes, I'll get better at screaming. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go, I'm in. So far it seems that the anarchy modes are definitely improvements over how ranked used to work. Ranked in Splatoon 1 in particular was miserable because it was very easy to seesaw. Splatoon 2, I think, found a nice medium where you have a bar that you fill out, a fill up. Oh, I went too far. What do you know? Um, but that way, you don't immediately drop down if you lose a match. Whereas in Splatoon 1, you can wind up seesawing for a long time, which I remember doing when I was trying to hit A. Heck. Alright, I'm outie. I remember trying to rank up to A in Splat Zones. On the original, oops, heck, in the original Splatoon, sure, I'll try again, and seesawing miserably and singing to myself, because I'm having a good time, having a good time. Readers, I was not having a good time. Yeah, I'm just gonna, uh. I know handling the driver is hard, but you were trying to control it too tightly for wind that heavy. If you think you understand the wind a little better, you can try again. So, do you want to? No. Leave me alone. I understand your reservations. Don't fret, though. There's no shame in not passing this test. Like, you're gonna make me look weak in front of Neil. Jeez. I don't need this guy getting too big for his britches. Where's the obligatory Mario enemy that I can hit with a golf ball? Oh, Monty Mole with a really big nose. He's just chilling. I don't really feel good about this. Of course, I said that about like the blooper too. Oh, the winds. Oh, no, I got him. Honestly, cannot picture me speaking with anything louder than an indoor voice. I am. I'm not good at being loud. It's true. Like if I'm on a roller coaster, I tend to just like cackle maniacally. I don't. I don't scream. I don't think I can scream. Even if something startles me, I gasp. Uh, could somebody please mow the lawn here? There's a lot of, like, uh, invisible hill- well, not invisible per se, but it's sometimes hard to tell where you can and can't walk. Please, I have a date with a mole. Or at least let me find Kid. Well, posture check, let me do that. One sec. Thank you. My bad back appreciates it. I gotta tell you, boy howdy with how busy we were at work today. Ooh, my back ain't happy. There we go. Uh, or maybe this is where I need to go to hit, like, the last mall. Jeez. Do you have a posture? Yes, a bad one. Check. <laughs> Everybody straighten your posture. This is me using channel points on all of you. I can do that. I have the power. Just, just pretend, okay? Everybody check your posture. Everybody get a sip of your water, or whatever you have with you. Heck, mole, heck. I don't think. Yeah, I don't. I don't want it. I don't want this, but I can't mole. Huh, huh. It's like, wh where can I walk on this garbage? I don't even know where Kid is. Kid should be around here somewhere. Okay. Oh, here we go. Uh, no, no. I'm stuck. This is like the world's worst hedge maze. Oh. Uh, there we go. 
Your channel was canceled due to lack of funding years ago. Those points are expired. No, it's cool. I got a gift certificate from a nice old couple. They said they're good for one posture check. I just conveniently have my thumb over the expiration date. Often end up sitting at 10 to 20 degree angles in your chair. Oh no. I know sometimes if I get really focused on like art or something, I probably hunch over more than I should. Either I have no focus or I have like periods of intense focus, but mostly it's the former, regrettably. Okay. I can't actually, oh yeah, okay, I can practice here. Uh, I'm gonna use a weaker club and then just get enough power to get over the tree. Hopefully this hits him and not the tree, but it's a little hard to tell. Ugh. Ah, heck. Don't give me that face. Razzin' frazzin'. Oh, he's going all the way back to this. You know what? No. No. I don't- I don't wanna. It takes too long. And it's for like a ticket. I don't care about tickets right now. Weak. Is that kid on the end there? In the red? Oh yeah. So, I heard your team defeated Azaleas in match play. You've really come a long way. Congrats! Since you wanted the dunes, I guess you want to face the Lynx doubles champs next, huh? No, I don't, actually. Well, you don't quite have the guts to take on the new Lynx champs. Well, we are darn good. Heh. Still, you beat Azalea's team. I'd love to see your skills in match play sometime. Later, okay? Can I just put Neil back in the enclosure from here? I don't know if I can. I should do, I think, the singles tweetament first. But I have Neil with me, whatever, whatever. Let's just do the doubles. Do the doubles cup. I'm gonna do this and then call it an evening. I am very much enjoying chill golf on Tuesday. And I hope you are too. But I'm also very much looking forward to doing more Splatoon 3 story mode on Friday. Neil back in the enclosure. Is Neil a person? Pet? Object? Yes. Neil is a nice boy who is unfortunately a little infatuated with the backside of cacti. Apparently. No, he's trying, but... See what I mean? What are you doing, Neil? Go from the other side. That way you're at least on the fairway. Ugh. He's unbenealable. I think that was beneal you. That was even worse. That was even worse. In story mode, there's a couple missions with weapon choices you request because you just cannot figure them out. Oh ho? Do you recall what they are off the top of your head? No pun is beneath you, but you just say that was quite punny. Oh, thank you. I take a standing ovation, but I will accept you kneeling before me. <laughs> Sorry, but kneeleth you. I ruined it. Oh, Neil, if that's out of bounds, I swear to God. What are you doing? Ugh. Okay, that wasn't great on my part either, but still, oh, I really got a backspin. Every time I don't, I regret it because my shot just, it's gone. We can't win with pars. 
Um, when I did single player on my own file, I always picked usually whatever weapon would offer the best reward. Um, the only time I switched out of it was there's one where you can use the squipper to hit these targets that are being tossed at you, and my Joy-Con would keep... Sometimes my right Joy-Con does the thing where the right trigger doesn't work, so if I'm using a charger, I'll charge up a shot, but then I release it and instead of firing, nothing happens. And when you're trying to do that, where you have to hit moving targets with a charger, that gets really frustrating. So then I switched to the Dapple Dooleys and did it. Neil is my true opponent. Also, hello Claire. I hope you're doing well. You love that one so f so much. You failed at it five times. You could do it more. Thankfully, much easier with the Dapple Dooleys. And like a controller that responds. You know what really frustrates me about Joy-Con wackiness beyond the fact that my controller not functions does not function properly is that one of my favorite weapons is the ink brush, but it really suffers if you can't flail at top speed. I don't want to speak about it here because I don't want to talk about any Splatoon 3 story mode spoilers, so I'll say mum on that particular challenge. Why can I not get any more distance out of this? Oh, because it's an approach shot. That's why. It's like, how come I can't go further than 60 yards? Because that's why, genius. This is a really ugly green. Ugh. Watch how Neil turns out to be the final boss and is insanely good. With him just toying around during these doubles matches. So he turns his cap forward facing and then like grins evilly. We're gonna bogey. We're gonna freaking bogey. Target speed run with the charge you can't do. Target speed run, target speed run. On the one with the targets being tossed. Yeah, that one, again, I did with the Dapple Doobies because my Joy-Con was just not having it using the Squiffer. Which is very sad. I can't think of what the target speed run is. Also, look at this bunker! My ball is ensconced. My ball is in bed, ready for, like, a book and a cup of tea. What the heck is this? <laughs> oh, Neil! I just... Oh, I can't... I can't salvage this. I really can't salvage this. Yeah, I need to just... Because I don't want to... I don't want to get stuck behind a tree. So I feel like this is the best spot for me to go to, but... I can't quite reach the fairway, Neil! <laughs> Oh god, that was awful. Oh no. Neil will require you to land five eagles over an 18 hole course, like Bowser did with you in Mario Golf 54. Man, I forgot how brutal some of the get character matches in Mario Golf 64 could be. Those three are preventing you from doing every mission with every weapon. I can't think of what the target speed run with the charger is. I'm sure I'd know it if I saw it, but I'm just blanking on it. I really want a birdie, but oh, this green is disgusting. Yeah, it did not. S Greens are not as steep as I keep thinking they are. To beat Neil, you need 18 albatrosses. Uh, the only way to win is to not play. Look at us, Neil! Sixth place! I know... I think I did the rail one with the... Um, the slosher. 
because I was looking at the, like, it's the one where you have like the jet sculpture, the slosher, and the nautilus, and I picked the slosher, thinking, what's the most obnoxious weapon for this? It's definitely going to be the slosher. Oh, heck trees. What is this little bump? Maybe Lavos is going to emerge from there. Okay. Uh, this is a oh, freaking tree. Why did they put a tree there? Because it's windy, too. Maybe I should just split the difference and go around the other side. No, it's... Heck, trees! Now I see why King Dedede kept trying to cut down Wispy Woods in the Kirby anime. It does make it too hard to golf. Oh, and there it goes. Even with the super backspin, it's gone. I think I need my more powerful clubs for uh, the links, just because the courses are so big. World 3, there's a time limit and you have to hit a bunch of targets. I gotta go look at my game now. I mean, not right now. Hang on, I gotta pause the stream so I can see what Mission Endor is talking about. I know one that I'm not looking forward to doing on stream is it's there's a time limit and you have to break boxes. And I forget what all your weapon options are. I swear to god, Neil, please. This is getting so hard because of Neil hitting the ball just wherever he wants. Um, there was one where I forget what your options were, but one of them was the flings a roller, which is the highest reward. And that one I just barely completed on time. The tricky part was actually breaking all the targets without running out of ink. I'll get to it Friday, that's true. I almost wonder if I shouldn't like just focus the stream solely on single player. Just because of all the connection errors. Heck, we've been getting. We're gonna bogey again. This is not my fault. I just want you all to know these bogeys are not my fault. We're getting beaten by a fish, Neil. And we're going to get beaten by a real peach. Oh, hey, Egad is golfing. I bet he has, like, cheap clubs. Well, when I say cheap, I don't mean inexpensive. I mean cheap as in they're probably super powered somehow. Which are completely different from my clubs that are also supercharged, that I'm not using right now like a fool. Maybe weird to use a super backspin on a tea shop, but I didn't want to end up in a weird spot. I'm pretty sure there's a rail mission in the second area, and that's the one where you can use the jet squelcher, the slosher, or the nautilus. Glasses are trying to slide off my face. Stop that. Stop that. Get back there. Oh, they're all crooked. Whatever. I feel like an anime character pushing their glasses up, but they don't look scary and shiny and ominous. I just look like a weenie. Like always. Ugh. Hang on, I'm gonna take my headphones off and try and fix my glasses. Okay, I can't solely blame Neil for failing to get on the green like that. Okay, we got a birdie. Thanks, Neil. Weenie Hut Golfer! <laughs> oh yeah, knowing how to force disconnect is good for when you're in a curse lobby, as we called them back in Splat 2. When the lobby's full, but it, the match just won't start, you're stuck in limbo. Thankfully, I've noticed Salmon Run has been a little more stable, knock on wood. Neil, please don't hit it behind a tree. Oh, Neil. It's like it's magnetized. Maybe he's just too warm on the Lynx course and he's desperately trying to get shade in like the most passive-aggressive way possible.
Okay, you can work with that, right, buddy? Super Weenie Hut Golfer. That's just Neil. That's what our lodge is called, Weenie Hut Golfers. That's Neil's enclosure. That wind. Tricky to think about how much the wind is going to affect my shot, just because I don't have a very high one, but it is very windy. I'm going to try it from here and see what happens. Wait. Okay. That's workable. Okay, Neil. Oh, good job, buddy. If you missed it, I was going to say we should replace you with the small fry. Small fry would be good at retrieving golf balls. Like you hit them into a water hazard. This here is okay. That wind, though, I gotta be careful. You both love and hate that Splatoon 3 includes the match history. It proves that you really did lose 15 matches in a row. Sometimes it's not your fault. Like, I had a few matches the other day where I had, like, I don't know, like, 7 to 10 splats and I would get, like, a thousand points, but our team would still lose. You know, you try your best, but you don't succeed. Okay. Thankfully, knock on wood, I haven't run into any partiers yet. I'm gonna be really peeved if I run into partiers now while I have, like, experience and money tickets going. Sometimes you get Neil on your team. Shoot in the backs of trees. I'm still gonna backspin because I don't want to roll into one of these little bunkers in the fast fairway. Or the heath. Okay, we're good. Happy to hear Splat sold better than every game ever in its first three days. It's great that this IP is doing so well, so I can forgive them for having all these connection errors because they probably weren't anticipating such an incredible response. And it's still frustrating, yeah, when you want to hang out with your friends, play in Sploon, but nothing works. But I understand. Is matchmaking match making? Oh, I should have backspun heck. Based on time played, I have no idea what it's based on. I still want to know what a lot of the like well, awards they give you mean. Like number one enemy splatter, but also number one overall splatter. What does it mean? Or while well, doing anarchy, I got record score setter a couple times, but I don't know what it means. If you've never had a Neil on your team, then you are the Neil. Every friend group has a Neil, and if you have to ask, well. Man, I don't really have faith in this. Look, I know I'm accommodating for the wind, but. You get that all the time because you're the only one in the tower. But Claire, you tend to play Chargers. I feel like Chargers aren't a great fit for the tower. We really gotta start getting birdies here. Or we're in trouble. I remember that was a problem, especially in like the first platoon, trying to play tower control and people do not want to get on the tower. That's true, it is a big platform that moves around. It's more that people are going to be coming up close to target you to get you off the tower, and chargers don't excel at defending themselves at close range. 
It's more like I can't believe your teammates are leaving you with the burden of being on the tower. Well, if you like being on the tower, that's another story. Uh, heck, we needed that birdie nail. Like, I enjoyed carrying the Rainmaker. Although I haven't played Rainmaker in Splat 3 yet. Please don't go in the bunker. Oh, you should have gone in the bunker. <laughs> Oh, this wind, too. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this shot. Oh, uh, ugly. Oh, man, that was bad. Your issue is that you're stupidly loyal to one weapon that serves you well in turf war, but then is not suitable for more combat focused modes. I think it depends, too, like. It depends, I guess it depends what weapon you're, uh, working with. Because you can find ways to make them work. Like, what do you, what do you like using in Turf War? Folks, I don't think we're gonna win this tournament, because we need more birdies, and we're not getting birdies, and I should have equipped my more powerful clubs, but also look at this guy! What can- I can't work with this nail! I'm trying so hard! Uh, I should try and land somewhere a little safer. You can snipe folks up close so long as they don't jump. Folks who learn to jump are your bane. The sploosh or the arrow spray? Neil. <laughs> I drive so hard and putt so far, but in the end it doesn't even birdie. Well, at least we parred. I mean, we need to get two birdies and then they need to screw up. And my hopes are not good. They're emphatically not good. Really wish I had the more powerful clubs. So if I could get up here, because I don't want to get stuck behind those trees there. But I don't think I can get up there. I'll try. With the wind, too. The trick with the arrow spray is that it's very quick. Um, so it's good for flanking maneuvers and getting behind people. Um, using things like move or swim speed up and ink resistance up um, can definitely help you get around quickly. Can't even get on the green, can you, buddy? We needed this birdie, and I'll do my best to chip it in, but, you know. Heck. Oh, they got plus one. The arrow spray, well, the aim on the arrow spray isn't great. Um, just because its shots are spread out so wide, which makes it great for aiming turf. Um, so you really gotta try and get behind people with the arrow spray. Trying to engage head on probably won't go well. If you can get up behind people. Really should have gone back and put Neil in his pin. Oops. Okay, that was my fault. That was my fault. <laughs> now Neil's rolling his eyes at me like, Come on, Mari! Get it together! I can't believe you hit it in the water! Now we're gonna lose! You might enjoy... I don't know what level you unlock it at. I don't remember. But you might get some mileage out of the... Splooshomatic, um, which is, it's a short-range weapon, it's got a large bell-shaped end, 
Um, it's like the Aero Spray, but it packs a little more punch. Um, again, it's not very accurate, but it's really good for maneuverability. It's a lightweight weapon, so you get around very quickly with it. Whoops! That's why you always play as the medic and engineer in Team Fortress 2, because you don't ever have to aim. Oof. Well, even Kid and Jean got plus two, but ooh. That's ugly. I don't even want to give Neil any experience. I'm so disappointed in him, but... No, I should give him a level. Still, just... Ugh! Ugh! Um... More oomph. 52 gals good for having some spread, but it's so inaccurate. The inaccuracy drives me crazy. Anyway, the splish matic is a really good weapon if you want to be annoying. I think it might come with Curling Bombs in Splat 3. I know one of the sets has Curling Bombs in Splat 2, but it goes really well with Curling Bombs. So you can throw down a Curling Bomb, swim down that path, and then continue throwing, on, throwing down Curling Bombs to uh, get up in the enemy's grill. It's not that inaccurate, but it shots very so wildly. Like, if you go in the firing range and you just hold down the button, you can see how much it shots jump jump around. Hey, nicely done! You two did well to place in the doubles cup. <laughs> Having placed here at the very highest level doubles cup, you two are now top-class golfers. There's no reason to be depressed just because you didn't be kids, team golf. He's a breed apart. Alright, Neil. You're going back in the box. I'm gonna try that solo first off next time, but I should call it an evening now. Gotta be up early for work in the morning. You like the Octobrush in Splatoon 2 and 3, but the kits in 2 and 3 haven't been stuff you can handle. The sploosh feels like an ink brush without the finger tendonitis. But I love my ink brush, but I can't really deal with the sploosh. It's okay, I can use it, but it's not my preference. I prefer the splash o -matic, which is like the sploosh. Uh, I think same range and rate of fire, but it's very accurate. Its shots don't really deviate from the path at all. Yeah, I'll take the day off. Cool, see you around! I'm just, I'm gone. I'm dreaming of cake now. The inaccuracy just means you don't need to aim. I guess. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy I can stream for you all. This is just such a huge relief for me after work during the week. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm always really appreciative. Um, I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I will catch you on Friday for more Spoon 3. In the meantime, please stay safe, stay healthy, take care, and uh, don't be Neil. <laughs> Good night.